thanks so much everyone for joining. I am really excited to introduce you to Frank Condon. He's one of our partners and he works for a consulting company. One of his main client projects is Lifetime Roofing. And today he is going to demonstrate to you how he's created a dynamic web page using Duda Technologies and our Smart Suite API. Quick introduction, my name is Emma Montgomery and I'm a customer onboarding specialist here. And I've worked with Frank quite frequently as he was working on this build when he had questions and he shared it with our team and we thought, why not host a webinar? Frank, you can add anything meaningful about your, yourself, maybe share some background about what brought you to consulting and what brought you to SmartSuite. Sure. So I started Devobal Technologies around 2001, and we've worked on mobile projects, custom software development, websites, widgets, plugins, pretty much anything technology related. Over the last four or five years, we really started focusing in on website development, widget development, and integrating into low-code, no-code platforms to marry somebody's backend database with their website. That's a gist. And then through that, I'll get brought in, we'll get brought in as a development team to build the widgets and make the connections. But a lot of times these companies, they don't even have a system in place. So I will come in and help them build it out and consult with them to integrate it and build it. Great. Quick agenda. I'm just going to go through this and then Frank will go ahead and get started with his demonstration. We are going to discuss the creation of a web page that helped Frank create transparency between lifetime roofing and the clients. And then as he mentioned, he's going to go through the widgets that they built into the web page, all pulling in information from SmartSuite. So photo galleries, document sharing, financial data, all accessible to the client. The data is stored in SmartSuite and then it's brought into the web page. And then additionally, how the SmartSuite API created this client portal concept for the website. And then we will finish with a live Q&A. Frank? So for this project, they are a roofing company in Florida. When I started working with them, they had a very large software product that they were using and spending about $23 to $2,500 a month for their licensing fees. And we were able to move them over for five or $600 a month to SmartSuite. But it meant that we had to really build out everything from scratch. The beauty behind that is that this company has been around a long time and they do business a certain way. With this product that they were using was forcing them to do certain things based on how the product was designed and developed. <clears throat> So in the process of working with these, this company, I, we realized that the customers the, and the homeowners, they have trust issues. You know, contractors come in and take advantage of them and they want transparency. Where is their job at? <clears throat> Has the materials been ordered? Have you received our check? And the list goes on and on. As building out Smart Suite. We also take into consideration that we use a platform called duda.co. So if you're looking for a website platform for your clients or for yourself, it's a WYSIWYG drag and drop platform, really easy to use. We have hundreds and hundreds of clients on this platform and it's just a great tool. So the question was, how do we marry the client's website with their database so that the homeowner can have full transparency. Let me move this. So let me take you to SmartSuite. I'm trying to get the, uh, there we go. <clears throat> so I won't show you too much detail in SmartSuite because this is an active site. They're using it. They're running hundreds of jobs through here. But basically, we have a solution called Projects, and then we have a bunch of apps. And we have an, the main app is Jobs. So when a lead comes in, it comes in, we create a job, 
we create a filter called leads and we turn every field off that's not applicable to the person handling the lead. There's 75 fields in this app. So as the job moves through the system, you know, from leads, it will go to sales. And in sales, we assign the lead and to a sales rep and we change the status to assigned. And then from there, we have automation built in where the sales rep gets notified that they have a new lead. And then when they come into their sales view, it only shows obviously their jobs. And we turn on a number of fields that apply to this phase or this process. And then once a job is ready to move to management review, our C-level people will review that job to make sure that all the elements are there, the contract, we're getting the right pricing. And then once we approve it, then we move it to our permitting team. And again, the permitting team is just a view and we take out all of the fields that are not needed in order for the permit person to apply for a permit. And our goal is to make this a copy and paste so that person is copying from SmartSuite into a county website to create the permit application. And then once the permit's approved, the status has changed, it moves to our production team. And again, the production team schedules material delivery, job start date. And this automation is built all behind all of these things to notify the sales rep, the client, and so on. And the job after production moves to close out. So moving all the way back up to the top, as soon as a lead comes in and is assigned to a sales rep, this is where SmartSuite and Duda start communicating. So as soon as when we view, we've leveraged the API in SmartSuite, so when a lead comes in and it's assigned to a sales rep, we automatically create a web page in our client's website. We call that the client portal. And I'll show you that now. So I've turned off certain fields just for security's sake, but this unique URL at the top is created inside of Smart Suite. It's given a, this is a client ID at the top. It instantly creates this web page for the client. And as the sales rep gets a photo of their house and puts it in Smart Suite, it will drop it in this spot right here. And you'll see that it will pull in the client's name, which is pulling from the first and last name in Smart Suite. And then the sales rep's information starts to get populated. So the sales rep will put his name, phone number, and email. And again, it's already in Smart Suite, so it will populate in this box. The sales rep has a welcome video inside of Smart Suite that gets pulled in. And these are widgets, and I'll show you these in a moment. All of our widgets, you can drop onto any Duda web page and then map the fields that you want to display. So we've created some content widgets that pull just text, a video widget that will pull videos. So imagine you're the client and you come to your portal page. You can see, hey, what's the date of the contract? What's the date of the deposit? And as fields in Smart Suite are being clicked off, either by permitting, management, production, sales, they start to get populated, the key dates down here. On the right-hand side, as we receive checks from the client, we log them into Smart Suite, and we have a whole financial backend that we built out in Smart Suite. It gives the client a breakdown of what they paid and what's owed. Inside of Smart Suite, our sales reps go on the site and they start taking photos of the house before, after, and during. And in Smart Suite, we have a toggle, and I'll just show you that. It's neat. Inside of a job photo, we've got a toggle that says share photo. If yes, then it shows on the client website. So imagine that we also want an adjuster, insurance adjuster. He or she may want access to this information. We can just share them the client portal link. Scrolling down, we have the same thing with job documents. So if we have a contract or these are obviously specific to roofing, but any document that we wanna share with a client inside of SmartSuite, we upload that document. We upload everything in the jobs, everything's linked back and forth. But inside of the job, we also have a share document, yes. If selected yes, then it shows. We might have 40 documents for a project, but only show three to the client. Scope of work for the client. So we build the scope of work inside of Smart Suite. And again, I just created a view. Turn only the fields on that I need for a scope of work. 
And you see these buttons will all take me to the scope. And I'll show you some, some uh, documents that we've created like that, that are auto-populating from SmartSuite. So it's not just a website. We also do documentation. The homeowner contract, so they can click on this and it will open up the contract where they can review it, sign it. And all of that is generated from SmartSuite. And then I won't show you down below, but we have our team. So our C-level team, we want the homeowner to be able to contact anybody in our company. So we have a little app that has our team in it and we just pull it into this widget onto the site. So you can customize the web page any way you want and pull any data, whether it's a document, image, video, or just rows of data into your website using one of the four or five widgets that we've created. How are we doing so far? Great. So okay. we do have a question. Sure. How do you handle the number of records that could happen? Meaning, do you have a plan in place for the record limits? You mean inside of SmartSuite, how many records? Yes. And it, yeah, it so depends on the plan, to be honest, Chris. But Frank, go ahead. Yeah, so there's obviously, a, I assume, a licensing deal, right? But there's other ways where you can take and create an app and create an automation that when a record is dead or closed, we take all that information and we move it to another app. Or we just create a view and we export it and Got save it. it that way. And we have a question about how you handle authentication and permissions through Duda. How does that work? That's all done through our development team using the API. So I can get a technical answer for whoever needs it and send it to them. But that yeah. is beyond my brain power. I think it, they build it. And then where do you make the widgets you mentioned? In Duda or SmartSuite? Uh, you make them in Duda. Okay. Yeah, so Duda has a widget builder. Now with Devolable, we... We sell those widgets. So if somebody has a Duda site, we can sell them the widgets that we bought. They drop them on their site. And I'll show you that in a minute. How? Well, let me just show you now. So if I go to Duda, I'm on the web page. And these are all widgets. So when you hover them, so let's click on this widget. When I open this widget up, let me just click edit. I've created a connection between Duda's widget and my SmartSuite account. And this is where I start mapping all of my SmartSuite fields with my Duda fields on the left. So in this widget, I'm saying, hey, go to SmartSuite, grab this field title and pull the data into this table five. And each of our widgets, not only, so once you pull the data in, you need to style the widget. So when you open the widget and you click on design, you can change the background color of the widget, the padding, the border, header style, text style. I can customize the look and feel of these widgets to match whatever website I'm on. So the widgets have already been built by us. Now you can build them yourself or you can contact me and I can guide you from there. Does that make sense? Yes, and just a follow-up question before you continue. Is Duda a page or an actual platform? It's a platform. Got it. Yeah, it's a really good platform. And then one more. Does Duda already have the established integration to SmartSuite? And does that allow for Duda to be a no-code field integration with their builder? Or does everything require custom widgets? So in order con to connect to SmartSuite or any third-party application, you'll need to build a widget inside of Duda and they have a widget builder. So you'll have to know some code and you know how to make the connections. But once you make it, then what happens is that widget lives inside of every website. Like these are all widgets. So then you drag the, let's say in our case, our smart suite widget, we just drag it onto the page, make the connection, map the fields. And now we're pulling in the information from smart suite. Got it. You can you can continue now. Okay. So I'm going to move away from the integration between Duda and 
Smart Suite just for a moment. So we have contracts, right, with the client. So all of the information, and this is a dummy one with dummy data, but all of this information, this is an HTML page that we have plugged in the different fields from SmartSuite into this contract. So it auto-populates. So if you were to go into SmartSuite, and again, I use views a lot, I go to client contract, and I've got a filter set up to only show this client. All of these fields are the fields that need to be populated in SmartSuite in order for this contract to be completely filled out. So I purposely left some out for this demo where you see NA. It's telling us that, hey, this contract, this document doesn't have the information. So just go back to SmartSuite, put it in, hit refresh, and this page will reload. So this is our intermediate fix until the document designer does some of the things that we need to do. Our contracts need to be signed. So we've, we've integrated signature into this contract and the homeowner can save it, download it. And when it gets saved by the homeowner, it goes into SmartSuite as a document. So we're using the API again to make this a PDF once it's signed. Same thing with our scope of work. So we're pulling this from a view inside of, and again, this stuff is, the client can get to it from their client portal, or we can send them just a link to that document if we don't wanna share the client portal with that specific client. So if we go to scope of work, so this is the scope of work that we've put in. Again, fields, filters, certain ones are being displayed here. If the client wants a scope of work, I can simply copy this, send it through the email section in the communication in SmartSuite, and the client can download it as a PDF. When they do that, this turns into a PDF for us as well and pops it into SmartSuite. Any questions so far? A bit unrelated, but... Does your job at record have everything related to the job or are you using different views in the grid view? Okay, say that again. Does your job app record or I guess your job app have everything related to the job and then yes. you're using different views? Yes. Got it. Yeah. So one of the things, just I'll just take a little side note on that. On one of these things, so for training purposes, I had to try to find a way to explain to our sales team versus our management team versus our permitting team, production team, why do we have a field called sales phase and a different one for management phase, a different one for permitting? Why couldn't we just have one field that has all the phases of a job? And let me show you what I'm talking about. If you look at the sales phases, these are all the different phases that the salesperson could take this job through before it gets to management review. This client does not want just anybody moving a job once it's in management review to permitting. So what we had to do is break these up into different fields so that we could leverage the permissions. So we only allow salespeople to manage and update the sales phase, management team, management phase, if that makes sense. So what we did in order so that we didn't confuse everybody, because when a salesperson looks at their job, again, they can see all of these fields when they open up a job. <clears throat> but their last thing they might see in the sales phase is management review. However, the job could be in production and being built. So we created this field called current phase. And in this, we just wrote some a formula that says, hey, look for whatever the last phase is and put it here. So it doesn't matter what somebody else has previously selected, it will always tell you where that job is at. So when we're creating filters, we use current phase as our filtering, not any of these. So anyhow, I created this view so that I could explain this to the team so that they could understand the concept. So views are really powerful if you know how to use them. And then does your client work from the grid view or they usually 
or do they usually drill into the record view? Like how do your clients collaborate in here? Yeah, so they depends on the person, right? I have some of our C-level team, they like the card view. Some of our sales members are uh, not real good with technology and they understand this grid view and that's they don't dare change the view even though they can. I have set up private views for all of them. Actually, what I've done is created views in public and said, hey, duplicate this view, put your name instead of my, put it as John. And then I help them set their filter so that it only shows their records. So it's one of the nice things about Smart Suite is that they really can customize it to their liking, each person. In this solution, is Duda used for a display only, read only no, at the front end? In Smart Suite's the back end? Can yeah. users enter and update data through the Duda? Yep. So that's my next piece I was going to. Perfect. So I, again, we have 75 plus fields inside of the job app. And I use fields to only show the fields that are necessary for a specific task. So imagine that a salesperson is with a client and they have their tablet and the client needs to pick a roof material, a color of shingle. So this is not done and I'll probably be done tomorrow and then we'll go to testing. So on the website, we are currently pulling in the different images and description for each of the different products that we carry. You see where it says, I want this? You see the button on the right? So this is where the Duda now, instead of Duda just pulling information in, now we're sending information back. So when the client finds the shingle they want and they click, I want this, it locks this now. We'll have a watermark up here that says locked. And then it goes inside of their record because remember the client web page on Duder is using their client ID from Smart from SmartSuite. So it will then go in and populate the image, the material type. It'll populate all the information for that item that they selected on the website. So yes, that's the next phase for us is getting finding ways to is to go from Duda back to SmartSuite. And one simple way is we had a meeting yesterday. The sales reps want the client to have a space on their webpage right here somewhere that says refer a friend and we'll give you a hundred bucks. And then it's just a web form. It'll open up, pop open a web form. They fill it out and it comes into the job as an assigned lead to that sales rep because each sales rep will have their own web form and then they can stop the sales process. Do you create the client ID or is the ID generated from SmartSuite? It's generated from SmartSuite. Okay. So really we just take a formula. Let me look at the button to show you. So Duda has a feature called dynamic web pages, which means when we pass over content to that website, it will automatically build a custom page using a template that we've created and drop in the different data points throughout that page. So you look down here on this button that we've created. So I know that in Duda, the web address is always lifetime slash client. And then we drop in the client ID and we pass that to Duda and Duda then creates a web page based on that client ID. And there's no limit to the number. If you had a thousand clients in Smart Suite and you wanted them to all have their custom page, it just, Duda doesn't have a, a limit really. It'll just create a, that page. So, in summary, in Smart Suite, we connect it to Duda using widgets. In Smart Suite for job documents and job photos, we allow the Smart Suite use it to turn on and off things that will display on the Duda website. We are using HTML API pages to pull data from Smart Suite into an HTML page that we can share with a client. 
And our hope in time is that we don't have to do this, that we can use documents, the document designer and integrate it that way. But in the meantime, this is what we're doing. And now we're moving into going the other way. You can interact with the DUDA website and update records based on the client ID of things that you do from DUDA back to SmartSuite. Doing forms, we can, obviously we're already doing that, but this is just different level stuff. Questions, comments? Yeah, we, we do have quite a bit of questions. Okay. So in the beginning, you said you were turning off fields. Were you doing that in SmartSuite or DUDA? Some fields, some obviously some fields we can do in SmartSuite, but for this demo, we turned them off on the API just to protect our client info. Got it. Can you password protect the web pages? Yes. Every web page in Duda, you can create a unique password. And we could actually, in SmartSuite, I could create a field, a formula field that generates that password using maybe their username and the, their username and then create a random password. And then we can do an automation to email it to them with a link to their web, web page. Why did you decide to choose SmartSuite as the backend? I have worked with Podio, Zoho Creator, a lot with Airtable. What I saw and just my opinion on it is that some of these other low, no, low code, no code software, they were starting to hit like a peak. And then when SmartSuite came out, it looked like they were five steps ahead of them on the, when they released. So in my company, I have a thing where I learn it. I teach it to my team and then they do it. So I jumped on all of those products I mentioned to you first. I'll spend months playing around with them and using them and finding the weak spots. And that's why you and I have spent a lot of time working together. And, and it's either a weak spot that I don't know how to do it or the software that's not doing it yet. What I've been very impressed with SmartSuite is the updates come out all the time. And I've had a couple of issues and then in a very reasonable amount of time, they're most always fixed. So what I've seen so far with Smart Suite is they seem to be running and not walking. And that's the company that I, I'd love to move. I probably have 100 plus Airtable clients that I would love to move over. And we built several other widgets. We built dozens and dozens of widgets to integrate with Airtable, a directory. Right, you can have a member directory. We've converted about a half a dozen of those to Smart Suite and integrated them with Duda. Not just what you saw today, but some other really cool stuff. Yeah, so far I like Smart Suite. I love the support. You guys have really seemed to be running out there, and I like that. Thank you so much. Yeah, we really appreciate that, those kind words. And it's been really great to work with you. Thanks. Thank you. And we do have quite a bit more questions. Can the API in SmartSuite create the code for the widget? No. Okay. No, you have to create this. Imagine the widget is almost like a bunch of hands that catch data. So you've got to create the widget in SmartSuite and write the code to say, hey, I, I need this field, I need that field. But like I said, once you create the widget, and make the connection, you can pull one field in, you can pull, as you see, multiple fields in and add multiple widgets to a single page to pull the information that you want. I'm thinking maybe you like a Craigslist or uh, anything, you can do anything. Um, what is the estimated build out time for SmartSuite and the due to web website integration for this project? I'm guessing it depends on the skill level working on it. And if they're talking about this specific project, like with most all projects, the team is a little resistant up front because it's new, right? The client's team. So once you get people using it, we're in this phase now where people are really starting to use it and they're wanting additional features. So you, this is where a coded software, I would call it a fixed software, this is where end users are using it and they're like, oh, it can't do that. It can't do this. Fortunately, SmartSuite, we just keep adding features, adding fields, creating automations. 
we haven't hit too many walls with it yet. So my guess is this will go on for a little while until everybody gets the features they want. You've got your finance team created some dashboards for them last week and the clarity that they're getting from what's happening with dozens and dozens of jobs at one time, they hadn't seen that before. So they're gonna want more. Yeah, do you mind actually, I have a question myself. Do you mind describing the different departments of this company and how they're each using SmartSuite in their own way? Yeah. Maybe how they connect together? Yeah, that's the best way to do it. Let's think of the views as departments, right? So I'm in SmartSuite, I'm in my jobs, and we have people on the front end that monitor leads coming in, whether they're through Thumbtack or Facebook or an ad campaign. We've got the leads coming directly into SmartSuite. So their job is to monitor that. When a lead comes in, they get an automation saying, hey, you got a new lead. They then assign it to a sales rep. So we have sales reps that are running around. And when the sales rep goes into their record, their job is to start adding information to the different fields that are pertinent to their department, to their job. We have our management team that reviews the electronic file, right, the record, to say, hey, we're willing to take this job. We have enough money. We've charged enough. We've got the contract. So we have a C-level team that reviews all of that. Then we have a permitting team. Their job is to apply for permits from the local government so that we can go tear those roofs off and put them back on. We have a production team that their job is to schedule material to be delivered. When the job is gonna be built, get all the inspections for the job. And then we have a closeout team. That team is getting insurance money. They're communicating with the clients, making sure we get their checks, making sure they get the proper documentation and warranties that they need to the homeowner so that they feel good that their job is was done correctly. So those are the general, and there are different people that run each of these departments. And are you by chance using permissioning? Like how are, how is yeah. this, how are these teams engaging in the data? Yeah. So we have, so our level, our pricing level allows us to have permission at the field level, which is really valuable because when the owner of the company says, hey, I'm paying out commission to everybody, but I don't want them to see each other's commission. How do we do that? So we use permissions and we lock fields down and we hide fields down. We have fields that only the owner can see. She has a place where she makes notes on a, on a client or on a salesperson. So she has a field and it's locked down. Nobody can see it. So yeah, we use permissions all over the place. That's great. About, about how you collect your leads, are you using a form or how does that lead intake process work? Form. Yeah. Okay. Anywhere where we can't embed the smart suite form, then we'll use an API or we'll use Zapier to send that. Okay. Can changes come in from the widget and go into the smart suite to trigger automations? Yes. Okay. Do you mind elaborating a little bit on that? Yeah. So this, for this scope of work, for this widget, we're pulling in, let me show you where we're pulling this in from. So I have a thing called material items and let's look here. So these are all the different shingles and colors, right? We're pulling this information now into here and when in smart suite, if I say that this is inactive, like we can't get beach wood for some reason, I come in this into smart suite and mark it as inactive, then it won't show as an option for the client. Now, when the client says they let's say they want this one, beach wood, and they click, I want this, it then goes into the job record, and I'll pull up my view. it will go into client roof selection and it'll take the material item record that they selected on the website and populate all of this information. Really, we're just populating, let me see, which one is it? 
it's populating this, and then we're doing a lookup for everything else. And imagine when this job goes into production, actually even in permitting, when we apply for a permit, we need to know, like the permitting office in the local county wants to know, hey, what's the manufacturer? What's the material used and what color is it? When it goes to production and they're gonna put your roof on your home, they need all this information. So by allowing the homeowner from their home to look at this and make this selection, it's saving the sales rep some data entry, but it's really hopefully saving a lot of questions back and forth. Hope I answered that one. No, that, that's great. Can people upload into the website and the documents go into SmartSuite? Yeah, you can do that now with a form if you wanted. And then someone noticed that the e-commerce widget on the Duda page. Do you have a use case example of the web page selling items with Duda and SmartSuite? No, we haven't done any of selling items yet. Okay. And I would say this, if it can be done with SmartSuite's API, and your API is very good, by the way, it's the developers had, there's a lot of security behind the way you guys have created your API, which is once you understand it, it's really pretty powerful. But no, we have not done any e-commerce stuff yet. But if your API allows it and the API or the third party allows it, then we can make it happen. So it looks like if anyone has any last minute questions, please feel free to put them in the Q&A or the chat. But is there anything, Frank, that you'd like to share? No, if you have any questions, go ahead. This has been really useful. I'm getting some great feedback in the chat. It's really impressive. And our team, in fact, is also impressed. We love to see these use cases in action. And when you and I have worked together, it's I haven't helped you do this at all. It's been all on your own and your company. The questions that you've been asking me are just, how can I bring more value to SmartSuite? But this, I owe this all to Frank. This is him and his team that have created such an impressive use case here. Oh, thank you. We So far, we're very happy with it and the, the partnership and the support. Yeah, it's been great. Thank you so much for hosting this. It's been great to have you and hopefully we'll have you on some future webinars. All right. Thank you, everybody. Good luck.